Welcome everybody to another YouTube exclusive Voice of Nick episode. We're playing more Shadowrun Returns. We're gonna go talk to uh, James Celestrian the Third here and see if we can figure out what the heck's going on. Lady and gentlemen, this is Little Sabby. She's the elf who saved my daughter and the only one who has faced our common enemy in combat. Herr Brockhaus, what does the representative of the, of the great dragon Lofweir have to tell us about the magical insect this Shadowrunner recovered? Brackhouse speaks slowly with a deep, melodious German accent. He takes his time, accentuating each word, relishing each vowel and each consonant, tasting them as if they were a delicacy. My Lord Lofwier has witnessed the insect's physical manifestation before, roughly 9,000 years ago. As you are aware, magic ebbs and, f and flows from the earth, cycling from peak to peak over the course of 5,200 years. As the level of magic grows... Hans, dear, I love you, but could you babble on forever and I believe its time is of the essence? The painted elf addresses you. Little Sammy, is it? Delighted. The bug you fought was not merely a magically awakened animal like a wyvern or a hydra or anything else in the sixth world. In fact, it isn't from this world at all. It's the physical embodiment of an insect spirit from another plane of existence. Oh, this requires one of the etiquettes we don't have. I imagine moving from one plane to another isn't very easy. Correct. Perhaps Dust German can tell you all about it at length someday. He's got plenty of time to chit-chat. Now, an insect spirit can't simply thumb a ride through an astral space and show up on Earth late for dinner. Dinner, in this case, being us. Two elements are required to bring one across the void, a shaman and a host. First, the spirit calls upon a shaman, often in dreams. The spirit seduces the shaman with promises of great power. The shaman then accepts the spirit as his totem. Next, the insect spirit requires a suitable host. The best candidates are the disaffected and the disenfranchised, in short, the weak-willed. Their minds are the most susceptible to suggestion, which is helpful in making the transformation. As you may imagine, these are the sort of people easily attracted to a cult, such as the Universal Brotherhood. Finally, by performing what has to be a truly disgusting ritual, the shaman serves the insect totem and plants the spirit into the host, willingly or not. Then it's feeding time. Harlea Queen is correct. The insect spirit will then slowly consume its host while transforming it into the spirit's own insectoid body, thus manifesting itself fully on this plane. What's this have to do with a great dragon and an elf who likes cosmetics? Funny kid, but it's no laughing matter. <laughs> this is bigger than hunting down an insect shaman or putting down a few 9mm rounds into a bug. The initial bugs prepare a nest for the summoning of a queen. Once a nest has its queen, she literally explodes with newly manifested insect spirits. They swarm out of the nest, feasting on all the flesh they can find and implanting more insect spirits into the fresh corpses. And again, and again, and again. The room falls silent as they consider the scenario, faces grim. Telestrian breaks the silence. This is not an infestation, little Sammy. It's an invasion. My lord Lothia knew this day would come, but he did not know precisely when nor where. Your rescue of Mr. Telestrian's daughter has exposed the existence of an insect spirit for the first time in this cycle of the world. Then why don't you just fire a cruise missile at the Brotherhood and call it a day? You have engaged the enemy. You know why. The insect spirit is only a resident in the transform host's body. Conventional weapons can hurt the body and expose the spirit, but the spirit itself exists on two planes. It cannot be destroyed by mundane means. Hence, Project Aegis. Herr Telestrian's biotechnology and agricultural divisions worked with my lord Lufwe's somatological engineers and designed Project Aegis to destroy an insect spirit once it had reached from its host. The formula, a fluorescing astrobacteria strain, exists in the physical and astral plane at once and can thus affect the insect spirit. Now that was a mouthful. Did you memorize it or are you reading it off some index cards? My director of R&D, Diane Ravenwood, will explain how Project Aegis will be used in the field. Dr. Ravenwood? Our weapons specialists have rapidly prototyped a delivery device for the fluorescing astrobacteria strain. They've created some prototype launchers which fire Aegis-filled shells. When fired, the shells will discharge a high-velocity stream of the bacteria. 
In order to destroy one of the bugs, it must first be damaged using conventional weapons or magic until the spirit is released from the host body. Then the insect spirit must be shot with the Project Aegis prototype launcher to destroy it. So in order to stop an invasion of insects from another dimension, a dragon and an elf co-created a magical insecticide? Crudely put, but accurate. We must stop the Universal Brotherhood from summoning a queen, and we must stop them immediately. You are the only one who has been inside their facility, and the only one who's personally fought these creatures before. That, along with your highly effective assault upon my property, indicates you are the ideal person to lead the attack. I'm flattered. The painted elf grins, and his red lipstick catches the light. You should be. Come on, kid. When fate taps you on the shoulder, you've got to pay attention. Unfortunately, she has the nasty habit of tapping you on the opposite shoulder so that when you turn around, she's on the other side, giggling like a deranged schoolgirl. I hate that. Enough. Are you willing to undergo this mission, little Sammy? You had me at killing bugs. Show me how to use Aegis and I'll get it done. Excellent. Harlequin claps his hand as if seeing the circus for the first time. I love the way that the short-lived are willing to die even faster. It's very inspirational. Brackhouse raises his hand and Harlequin's clapping instantly stops. There is one final note, a warning if you will. You have seen the dangers the insects represent, but you have not witnessed the shaman's power. The shaman must tap into a powerful source of magic in order to summon a queen. We do not know what abilities that power source will grant. Beware of the insects, but do not underestimate the shaman. Hey, don't scare the kid, Hansel. We still need to go on the mission. By the by, I'm coming with you, little Sammy. I wouldn't mind seeing those creatures for myself. I missed them last time. Telestrian will bankroll you so you can hire the rest of the team. Find me when you're ready to go, and we'll bug right out of here. James Telestrian sighs. Yeah, speak with the Harlequin when you're ready to depart. If you wish to acquire additional supplies for your mission, find my assistant, Quoth. He's highly resourceful. Great. Speak to Quoth to purchase supplies. Algernon, does he, does he have a side mission for us? We could also probably buy another level of our thing that we want. Let's see what we can get here. Um, we would have to get ranged combat, or we could get quickness. Chance to hit with ranged weapons. Unlock specials. This is chance to hit in ranged combat. Kind of the same thing, isn't it? All right, what's Algernon doing? May I provide spells, spirit, foci, or fetishes to help you on this critical quest? I have a question first. Speak it. Why were you spying on me at the seamstress's union? His eyes widen at the question. You mistake your importance, little Sammy. No, I was not spying on you. Until Mr. Telestrian summons, you were beneath my notice. I saw only a customer. Now, do you require my magic? Are you really here? Algernon's face takes on a dreamy expression. Are any of us? Yes, little Sammy, I'm here. And at the seamstress's union. And a myriad of other places. On to the work at hand. Do you require my magic? Who are you? I'm a peddler of magical spells, spirits, and foci, nothing more. Truly? No. Do you require my magic? Can I see what you're selling? Yeah, I don't, I don't want any spells. Damn, he has a lot of spells, though. I bet this game has a really rewarding path for um, people who play magic characters. Alright, Mr. Quoth is going to have some supplies. We could also talk to Marie, Marie Louise. I'm assuming she uh, went, like, maybe James Lesher in the Third sent her to France to uh, study abroad for, like, most of her childhood, which is why she has a French accent and he doesn't. <laughs> I was listening. It sounds bad. Thank you for everything. I'll be fine. I believe you. You look like you have a question. Why were you locked up at the Universal Brotherhood? Father didn't approve of my boyfriend and tried to scare him off. Something went wrong and Hakim ended up in a wheelchair. Father covered the whole thing up and led to, lied to me about Hakim. He told me horrible things. Her jaw clenches. And I believed him. My Aunt Lin told me the truth about Hakim and how my father lied. She preyed upon my anger. I was so disgusted with him. It was easy for her to get me to leave and join her new family at the Universal Brotherhood. What did Lynn Telestrian and the Universal Brotherhood want with you? 
Aunt Lin was very excited to have me there, almost manic. She talked about the inner circle and how I was going to be at its center. She said I would be their queen. The way she spoke it was as if she'd seen God or something. Her eyes closed and she sh hugs herself tightly. But it's not God, says she is. Only bugs. It's just bugs, only bugs. Was it Harkim who hugged you in the Matrix? She smiles, in love. Yes, even after my father ruined his life and convinced me to hate him, he's still been watching over me. My angel in cyberspace, Baron Somdi. After we escaped, I told Harkim about the Brotherhood and the bugs. It was his idea to steal Project Aegis and so you could go back to the Universal Brotherhood and exterminate the bugs. But I don't know how he knew about it. Baron Somdi just knows things. So what did Harkim tell you about us breaking into your father's office? Nothing. I haven't spoken to him since last night. Why? What happened? It would went as planned until your father's people found me and brought me in. Of course it went as planned. Harkim is amazing in the Matrix. I'm sure you'll, I'll hear from him soon. I should go. Oh, it's McCluskey. Well, we're gonna rub it in his face then. You're gonna die, asshole. Maybe, but I'm gonna live first. You still die screaming. Oh crap, he doesn't have anything to say about that. Is there something I can clarify for you? Tell me more about Project Aegis. Telestrian Industries Corporation has been working on Project Aegis for two years without fully understanding its use. Lofweir did not trust me with the information. My engineers finally met the Dragon specifications three months ago and had just begun the production process when my cousin Lin hired Shadowrunners to destroy the lab and the factory, leaving only uh, us the only sample you stole. Why was Marie Louise taken by the Universal Brotherhood? He pauses before answering. The host for the Queen is chosen very carefully as the interactions between the Queen and lead shaman are critical. A family connection between the two roles is ideal. As you've discovered, my father's indiscretion with Melinda Watts, you know that Jessica Watts, the shaman, and Marie Louise are related by blood. I would appreciate if that information remained in the shadows. How do I use Aegis? My people have weaponized the Project Aegis formula by creating shells which, when fired, propel a high-velocity cloud of the material, which should be effective at killing exposed insect spirits. There are more effective ways to deliver Aegis, obviously, but time was of the essence and I needed to improvise. I should go. Indeed. I'd like to imagine James Celestrian as more of like a uh, Silicon Valley startup guy. It's why you usually you'd give like a you know a crazy rich guy like this you kind of assume that he has like a British accent I don't know it's just kind of what you go for but I'm we're going for Silicon Valley guy and he moved to Seattle we did not allow many opportunities during our briefings for you to ask questions Shadowrunner you may ask them now how did the insect spirits get here when the membrane between planes sins. The insect spirits reach into the mind of a shaman and begin their manipulation, playing on weaknesses and offering unlimited power if the rituals needed to bring the spirits here are performed. But once a shaman takes an insect spirit as a totem, they begin an inevitable decline into insanity, slowly losing their humanity. Eventually, the shaman completely succumbs, choosing the contentment and sense of clear purpose that being part of a hive provides. Perform your role, serve your queen, that is all. If Lokweir had seen this before and knew another was coming, why didn't he move faster? Based upon the previous cycles of magic, the first insects are not due to appear for another 700 years. My lord Lokweir believed he was well ahead of schedule. Something is different this time. It is concerning. Why do you think it's different? Perhaps it's due to the population of humans and metahumans on Earth being so much higher than in previous ages. As a result, the volume of magic created by sentient beings is correspondingly higher. Or perhaps it is the density of the population coupled with the advances of technology and society that has altered things. Magic has never returned to a world like this one before. The density of sentient creatures coupled with the density of information, coupled with the new concepts, the technological persistence of memory, heightens a society's existential angst. 
thus more people realize how truly horrible existence is simultaneously. That in itself is a maybe a form of magic. Lofia is studying the question now. What's it like to serve a great dragon? The German man's eyes narrow. Do not misconstrue my relationship with Lofia. I do not serve. Where do the insect spirits come from? As the level of magic in the sixth world grows the, for lack of a better word, the distance between the various planes of reality decreases. When the membrane between planes is thin enough, ritual magic may be used to draw things from one to the other. I should go. Yes, good luck. Alright, all we gotta do is talk to Harley Quinn. Gotta say, I'm kinda still <laughs> excited to have Harley Quinn in our party. Uh, ladies and gents, we're gonna do that on the next one. We're gonna start off this mission. Oh, also we should go get some supplies from what's his name. We can't forget to do that. Let's actually put our camera, put our character over here for the end. Guys, that's gonna do it though. Make sure you subscribe on this YouTube channel if you wanna see all these Shadowrun Returns episodes come out every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, four times a week. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.